Hi, this is Michael from BinaryCafe.com with another Brainy Phase Project video, and I'm kicking off a new series for this wonderful camera here, this Sony DSC HX300 camera. And the name of the series is the HX300 Expert Series. A lot of you have seen the review video and asked me a lot of questions like, how do I do low light photography? How do I shoot black and white photography? How do I use the manual focus ring? How do I use the creative uh, features of the camera to do artistic effects and stuff like that? So I've had a lot of questions come in and I figured the best way to answer these would be to do them in a series of videos here on the channel. So we're gonna cover everything. I'm gonna start out with basics. So if you're new to photography, we're gonna start out with basics, but then over time, we're going to get into advanced techniques like high dynamic range, how to do um, bracketing, how to uh, deal with white balance on the camera, how to use the aperture priority mode. And if these things don't make sense right now, if they're just terms that sound foreign to you, don't worry because we're gonna explore these video after video here in the series. But it's great, a camera like this for the price point of less than $500 for me is such a great camera with a 50x optical zoom like this one to get in and learn photography but it also has a lot of advanced features as well so this is a great camera to learn photography and we're gonna do that by exploring just about every menu over a series of videos here and really dig in deep so let's get started here with battery basics because if your camera doesn't have a working battery, you're pretty much done shooting. So with this camera here, with the HX300, there's a battery which is the NPBX1 battery. And if I take a look here on the bottom of the camera, I've got a little latch. And if I pop that open, I can see that I've got a battery inside right now. And I'm going to pop that out. And let's just take a look at the battery. So this battery is the BX1. Now the nice thing about this is the fact that this is the same battery that is used in the RX100 camera and the RX100 Mark II. The bad news is if you have an earlier version of the camera, like the HX200 or the HX100, the battery is not compatible. And the other thing is you have to charge this battery inside the camera unless you purchase an external adapter. So they do supply you with a battery and then they also give you an AC adapter here. This little box right here has a USB port on it. And what you do here is you pop these little prongs out, plug that into an outlet. And this is the US version here. So I've got the two prong. And then I take the USB cable, which is a standard USB on one end, and it's got the micro USB on the other end. So if I'm gonna charge the camera, I can just basically plug in the USB cable on one end. I'm gonna pop those prongs. I'll plug that into the adapter over there. And then I'm going to go to the other side of the camera. And I've got this little lever right here. And not a lever, but a little panel. And it says multi on one side, and I've got HDMI. So I'm gonna pop this open here, multi. And on the right hand side, I've got the wide side. I'm just gonna pop that in. And then what I should notice, if I wait, it should go amber in a second here. So if the camera's gonna charge, Oh, you know what? It helps if you put the battery in here. So, well, that's one way to know if the battery is charging, actually. And I'm just going to pop the battery in here. And I'm going to close it. Okay, there we go. So that little amber light is actually very useful because if that light's not on, then there's an issue. If it's flashing, there's an issue. I might want to unplug that port, plug it back in again. But if it's on, that means it's charging. And when it turns off, it means it's done. So your battery is charged. Now I'm going to unplug this and just point out here something kind of cool, which is because it uses a standard micro USB port, what I've done is I've purchased a couple of these little battery packs here. And what these are, these are a way that you can charge your phone. Usually what they do is they have a little adapter so you can charge your iPhone or your Android, or if you have other devices like a Kindle Fire, you can just basically charge those with these uh, little battery bricks here. They, they call them different names. But on this one, I've got a micro USB adapter here that just pops right off and slide that on. This is why I love these though, is I can actually take one of these, I can throw it in my glove compartment in my car or in my camera bag and I can carry this with me. I carry this with me in my bag and that way if my battery goes dead, what I can do here is I can just take that, 
over here, just like I did before. This is micro USB, so wide side on the right, plug that in. Now take a look here, the amber light is off, but when I hold down the power button here, this is gonna turn the device on, and it starts charging another device, watch. Boom. Now the amber light is on, which means that the camera is actually charging off of the battery pack right here. So that's a great way to charge your camera battery if you don't actually have power with you, if you're traveling or something like that. So anyway, that's just a little tip, um, some extra accessories that you can buy. And then another thing that I encourage you to do is purchase an external battery charger, because obviously you don't have to have the battery inside the camera. You can just plug it into an outlet like that, and you take your battery, and you pop it onto the charger, and then it's gonna go ahead and charge externally. The other thing I wanted to mention is third-party accessories. I, I like to try different brands, and sometimes I have good luck, but I bought some of these third-party batteries. They actually came with the charger. The charger works great, but when I got these batteries, they worked really well at first, but now they're only holding a charge for maybe a little bit of time. So I'm not as impressed with these batteries because like this one, this, this said that it had a full charge, but then I was using it in my camera and the camera just went dead and it said that the battery was exhausted. So these aren't really holding a charge. I think I'm just gonna stick with Sony batteries from this point um, for the RX100 and also the HX300. All right, so let's go ahead i'm going to make sure that i've got a battery in the camera here i do i'm going to turn it on and i want to show you a couple features here okay so on the back of the camera i've got this little menu button here and that menu button i'm just going to go ahead and press that and I'm going to navigate through my menus. I'm actually down here already, but if you show up at the top of your menu on the left-hand side here, you need to scroll all the way down to the bottom, or what you can do is just as a shortcut, just press up, and you want to get to that icon that looks like a suitcase, and then hit OK. When you hit select, you're gonna go into this menu screen here, and you've got different shooting settings. I've got three screens here. I'm gonna to go to the third screen, go down, and I've got display resolution. If you have your display resolution set to high, this is something that you set when you originally configure your camera when it's out of the box. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give you better looking images on the screen here, but it's also gonna chew up more battery. So if you want to, you can go into standard mode and it even tells you display standard quality images on the screen to save battery. So that's one thing you can do to help conserve battery. I do tend to keep that in high because I like better looking images, just buy extra batteries. All right, so that's one thing you can do. The other thing is if you go down here to um, this next screen here, the main settings, you've got panel brightness. The default here is three, that's right in the middle. That's a medium looking image, but if you hit the select button, hit okay, then you can see that you can set this to really bright, and that's helpful if you're outdoors and you're shooting in very sunny situations because it makes it easier to see the screen. But if you want to, you can also go down to dark, and that's gonna help conserve the battery just a little bit. The images won't look quite as bright and sharp, but you can set that lower if you want. So that's three. All right, now let's see what else we have here. If I go down just a couple other settings. Power save. This one's kind of vague. It doesn't really tell you what this does. So I'm gonna tell you what this setting does here on the camera. If you have it set to power save standard, what this is going to do is it's going to turn the camera off if you're not using it after two minutes. So you can set it to standard, or you can set it to max, or you can set it to off. If you set the, the setting to standard, then the camera's gonna turn off after two minutes of inactivity. That means that the if you've got it zoomed in to a certain level, it's gonna retract the lens, the power's gonna go off, and you're gonna lose that setting. So if you want to, you can set it to max, but what does that mean? Well, that actually means that's a maximum power save level, and what that does is it drops it down to one minute. So if your camera is unattended, if it's idle for one minute, then it's gonna close up, it's gonna power down. So I never set it to max. And something else to notice here is if I set it to max and I go back to that other option that I showed you before, 
Notice display resolution, it's grayed out. Now it's standard, and so if I, I go and I click on it, it actually tells me right now that this operation or setting is not available as follows um, because I'm in PowerSafe Max mode. So if you want a better looking image on your screen, then you need to make sure that that setting here under main settings and it's screen number four, make sure that your power save is set to standard and not max. And that's, that's kind of weird to me because it's just one minute difference. Max, it turns off after one minute. Standard turns off after two minutes. But thank goodness they added this option, which is off sometimes. When I'm shooting YouTube videos where I've got a camera set up on a tripod and I'm adjusting like maybe another camera that I have set up on a tripod, the last thing I want to have happen is for the camera to actually turn off. And so I'll actually take the power save mode and turn it to off. Now the bad news about this is if you forget that you left the camera on, it'll suck all the juice out of the battery and it'll actually uh, deplete the battery. But it's also helpful to put it into power save off if you're running off of USB power. So if you want to, if you have the ability to plug into an outlet and you plug in your adapter here, you can actually run off of that USB. And so you can actually run the camera off of the USB power and so that's going to allow you to make settings and, and modify things. It's really good to set the camera into the power save mode where it's actually off if you want to do that. All right. So that's basically uh, the first video here. These are power save settings, some recommendations for uh, battery saving. It is also important to remember that you've got this little finder button. Sometimes when I'm setting up the camera, what I'll do is I'll actually um, suck up a little less juice by pressing the finder button. And then it's using the, L not the LCD screen, but the viewfinder, which consumes a little less power. And then once I get things set up, I can just hit that button again and it'll switch back to the screen. So that's another way that you can conserve power. And then the other thing to remember is that if you're zooming in and zooming out, this is a big honking lens here and that's actually going to suck up a lot of juice. So as you're using the, the lens, make sure that you use that minimally. But the best thing you can do is actually just purchase extra batteries and make sure that they're charged. So um, thanks for watching. That's the first video in a series. We're gonna get into some really cool stuff here. Um, over the next few videos here, we're going to cover some advanced settings on the camera. We're going to get into the manual focus ring, how to shoot in low light situations, and then how to get into some of the different shooting modes. So uh, be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.